Ladies and gentlemen, Salamai, welcome back to the video. Today we're gonna to talk about how to get a big bench, what technique looks like, some options with technique, because it does vary depending on the individual, and then some tips and tricks to build that bench, to build your chest. Stay tuned, dive in. Three pieces we're looking at, grip, what my arms are doing, upper back, and then also our leg drive and getting stability through the bench. These rings right here on a typical power bar will depend on the bench and the gym you go to, but all real power lifting bars and gyms have the same standardized ring. In power lifting competition, you can't go any wider than that. You must have your pointer on there. Bench as wide as you can that is comfortable. So for me, that's kind of middle ring, middle finger on the ring. Now when we're talking about grip, we also have to talk about bar placement within the hand. A lot of people use wraps and different uh, things to help keep the wrist stiff, but its biggest point is that we just have to keep the bar stacked with our bones. If you have the bar too much in your actual hand up here, it's gonna be too far behind where we're stacked with our bones and also too far behind the movers, right? And that's gonna cause it to feel very heavy and not be stable. What I like to do is really get that bar in the meat and you can almost feel the two bones ending in the palm of your hand and you want that to be holding all the pressure and all the weight in the bar. Next, we're talking about the upper back, and I don't wanna overcomplicate things. All we wanna slightly do is I like to think about getting my shoulders away from my ears and slightly sticking out my sternum, getting your sternum nice and high. So if this is my normal posture, all I'm gonna do when I bench is slightly pull those ribs up just a little bit, and I'm pulling my shoulders down and away. This is gonna give me a really solid platform to press off of. We don't wanna be too flexed, and we don't want to be too overextended. Now, you might be talking about the famous internet arch. Some people arch and are capable of rounding their back so much, it almost looks like a rainbow. In the sport of powerlifting, or if you want to build your strength and move the most amount of weight possible, this shortens the range of motion, the path in which we have to move the bar. The shorter the range, the shorter the path, the easier it is to move, right? Typically, when you do have a bigger arch, same idea uh, exists. You want to move those shoulders far away from your body you can get a little bit of that arch. If you're incapable of that, like myself, I'm not that flexible in my back, a slightly more narrow grip or just a regular grip is just fine. There's been world records and tons of big bench presses with the various forms. I'd even go to argue that building a big chest is a slightly better with a longer range. So if your hypertrophy goals versus strength goals and arch is less important, we're still gonna pull those shoulders away from us. With the upper back, it used to be taught more to really squeeze those scaps together and pinch your shoulders together as much as possible. Uh, I'm semi on the fence. I've seen big bench presses perform this way and been very successful, but I think it's probably over cued or over taught. The last piece is gonna be leg drive. Now that's like the, still the most confusing, common, misinterpreted cue or technique within the bench press. There's kind of two main forms of bench press when I look at things. One is more of a constant tension and you're gonna have a lighter touch when you bench press. This is typically done from those with a slightly bigger arch, wider grip, in which your legs are gonna be flexed 100% the entire time. You're gonna to lightly touch, get the press command and press back up. The other one is sometimes with a, a little narrower grip, the grip doesn't matter as much, a slightly less arched upper back, we're gonna get like 80% tension onto our legs. We're gonna be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit heavier press and pause. And then once we get a press command or we choose to press, we're gonna flex 110% and fire right back out. Um, neither one is right or wrong. The ultimate goal is to keep our upper back in position and keep stability within our body. With leg drive, again, on the unrack, before the unrack, we wanna be flexing these quads like a leg extension. I think about throwing my toes through the front of my shoe and also forcing my knees out just slightly. The ultimate tool I'm looking for is at the top of my knee, actually opposite of squats, is I want it below my hip. In the sport of powerlifting and just for general stability, we want to keep our glutes attached to the bench. And that will allow us to flex our quads, flex our glutes while still keeping on the bench. If my knee is higher than my hip and I do that leg extension to flex my quads, knees out, my hips will raise up. Again, not the end of the world. In powerlifting it is, you get a red, red uh, scorecard, but in general strength, again, the stability will help. So you'll have to experiment with that a little bit. You can video yourself from the side or just feel your hips on the bench, but start maybe with just your feet in front of you. The shin angle, again, will depend on how long you are and how strong you are, and you're just gonna be flexing like this. This is literally what you're looking to do. Obviously not moving, because my upper back will be, excuse me, into the bench, and there'll be way tying me down, but that's the motion of leg drive. 
So, if you're having issues, you can try to tuck in more, depending on where you compete, if you compete. Uh, in the USAPL and other federations, you must have your heel on the ground. Other places you don't, you can go into your toe, which will allow you to tuck even more. But I suggest kind of keeping a shoulder width, hip width, slightly wider stance. Those are the three keys that'll set you up for a stable, strong, injury-free bench press. Um, I guess the very last piece would be bar path itself. We talked about it in the squat video, if you guys want to go check that out. Squatting, we want to keep that bar path over our midfoot and as straight as possible. In the bench press, it is slightly different. Um, again, looking at the two generalized ways to bench, if you have a little bit more of an arch, a wider grip, your bench press will tend to be a little bit straighter, um, but it will still have a slight arc always going backwards towards the face. Uh, they've done a bunch of data and looked at bar paths with proficient bench pressers and what that arch actually looks like can change. Sometimes it's a little squiggle and then up towards the face. Sometimes it is a more gradual arc up towards the face. If you're a slightly closer bench presser or slightly less, uh, more flat back, it will tend to have a little bit more of an arc. Again, just based on the range of motion itself, if we have a really high arch and we're not moving that bar of a very big path, it's gonna have slightly less of an arc simply because the bar is moving less. Anytime we tend to do uh, get stuck in the bench press, it is often because we're benching towards our toes a little bit more and that's moving it away from our strength, again, being stacked and the main movers being our chest and shoulders. If the weight's way down here, I'm obviously gonna lose control and strength. If I'm up here, those movers will be able to press through and I can finish up here at the top towards my eyes. Setting up for the barbell is similar. I like to set up with my eyes just under the barbell itself. I got a couple questions about heavy unracks. In the sport of powerlifting, uh, oftentimes you have to use a liftoff man that is provided for you and some people aren't comfortable with that. So a lot of lifters tend to go the route where they do a self unrack. How do you do that? Just like everything else, practice. But what we need to do is keep our eyes underneath that bar, straight in line as we're un unracking it. Nice firm grip, big breath and, and brace, just like we're doing every other lift. The more rigid we can be through our entire system, the more I can use those main muscles and movers to move the barbell. Last but not least, I think one of the key differences between the bench, besides the, the actual bench looking different and kind of those styles I talked about from other lifts, um, I think it's highly underrated for a, a, a muscle builder. You know, there's a lot of, uh, Hypertrophy boys on the internet talking mess on the barbell, and I think of the big lifts, the bench is actually the best for hypertrophy compared to the others. Squat, I get the argument. It's a very technical, unstable movement. It's very hard to get good at. Um, so if your goal is very short-sighted and short-term, yeah, you should probably leg press. If you want to be in this for the long term, I think all the barbell movements, learning the, the, the positioning, learning how to breathe and brace is best done through the power lifts. And it's also what will help you in the future on those other lifts. The better I am at squats, at breathing, bracing, positioning, knee traction, my knee positioning towards my feet, the better I am at utilizing the pendulum squat, the leg press, the hack squat. If you just hop into those, I think you're missing out on tools and the athleticism and the fun of the sport and the fun of being a gym rat. So for all the bros that love that, you do you. Um, but I think these are a great base builder. The bench itself can be a great piece for both strength, uh, handling heavy loads before you move on to hypertrophy work which leads me to the next point, that accessories and building general muscle helps the bench almost more than other movements. So doing stuff like dumbbell presses, shoulder presses, just having more mass, building your arms up, building your general pressing strength, incline, flat, decline, doesn't really matter, will help the bench in the long term. All these accessories don't necessarily help in the short term. Comment below if you want more videos on what accessories I think are best to build muscle for the bench. Maybe we'll dive into that future. I appreciate you guys so much. Be sure to share this thing, like this thing. New videos weekly, 3sb.co, good, companyapparel.com for all the swag. Salam Mike, appreciate y'all. We over me, be a part of something big in yourself, man. Catch you next time.